here with my daughter, Marty Soul, and with all of you. And we're here to march for truth today. We're marching for truth. The American people have a right to know. The American people have a right to know whether or not this president and his associates during the 2016 campaign colluded with a foreign government to interfere and attack our democracy. We have the right to know. And as Jennifer very clearly outlined, we have some demands today. We have some demands for an independent investigation, an independent commission that ensures that we have the truth. And yes, we want to see the special counsel investigation go forward. And yes, we want to see the congressional investigations go forward. But you know what? We need another investigation. An impeachment investigation! I am the co-founder and president of Free Speech for People. And on the, on the day of the inauguration, Joined with Roots Action, we launched ImpeachDonaldTrumpNow.org. We launched that. We launched that on the day of the inauguration because the moment the president took the oath of office, he was in violation of the two anti-corruption provisions of the Constitution, the Foreign Corruption Clause, otherwise known as the Foreign Emoluments Clause and the Domestic Corruption Clause, otherwise known as the Domestic Emoluments Clause. Now let's be clear here. This president, prior to taking the oath of office, was repeatedly warned, repeatedly warned that he needed to fully divest from his business interests in order to comply with those two anti-corruption provisions of the Constitution. He was warned by the former Chief Ethics Counsel for President George W. Bush, Richard Painter. He was warned by the former Chief Ethics Counsel for President Obama, Norm Eisen. He was warned by the most prominent constitutional law professor in the country, Lawrence Tribe of Harvard Law School. And he was warned by Walter Schaub, the director of the nonpartisan Office of Government Ethics of the United States government. He was warned. And what did he do? He carted out his bankruptcy lawyer on January 11th, nine days before taking the oath of office, and he announced that he was going to transfer, transfer the operational control of the Trump Organization, his company, to his two eldest sons. And, there, and therefore, and therefore, he said he would be in compliance with the Constitution. The test, the test here is not whether you've transferred operational control. The test is whether you have ownership interests in your company. And for the past several decades, every president has divested fully from his business interests in order to comply with these two anti-corruption provisions of the Constitution. Not this president. He's openly defying the law. He's openly engaged in conflicts of interest all across the world. He has 111 business interests in 25 different countries, taking payments, illegal payments, from foreign governments <laughs> under the Foreign Emoluments Clause. And under the Domestic Emoluments Clause, he takes tax subsidies and tax breaks illegally in violation of that clause from state governments and from the federal government other than his federal salary. This is a president who must be held accountable for his violations of the Constitution. Now, if that weren't enough, if that weren't enough to justify an impeachment investigation, we now know that this president engaged in directly interfering and obstructing with a criminal investigation that would incriminate potentially himself and his associates. He has fired the FBI director, James Comey, and he has openly stated that he did so to stop that criminal investigation. That is obstruction of justice. That is a high crime. That is an impeachable event. And as Jennifer, as Jennifer made clear, the first charge under the Articles of Impeachment passed by the United States House Judiciary Committee 28 to 10, 
1974 bipartisan vote against Richard Nixon. The first charge was obstruction of justice. So when we hear, when we hear our elected officials say we need to get the facts out, we can't move too quickly on impeachment. What they're really saying is we need to get other facts out. Because we have these facts. We have the facts that he's violating the Foreign Corruption Clause. We have the fact that he's violating the Domestic Corruption Clause. We have the fact that he's obstructing justice. This president needs to face an impeachment investigation now. Now, there were plenty of people who said when we launched this campaign, it's too soon. It's not going to go anywhere. Well, I'm happy to tell you that today, as of this morning, more than 1.1 million Americans across the country have signed up at ImpeachDonaldTrumpNow.org, and they're growing every day. And 10 communities, including Amherst, Pelham, Leverett, Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Brookline, as well as Los Angeles, Richmond, Berkeley, Alameda, and Charlotte, Vermont, have all joined in calling on Congress to take this action. And you know what? For everybody here who lives in Northampton, Northampton ought to be next. We need to be calling on Congress to take this action. This is not just about Donald Trump. This is about us. What are we as a nation? Who are we as a people? Yeah. The people are rising. Yes. We are rising to defend our Constitution. Yes. We are rising to defend our democracy. Yes. We 